What is up everyone, Random Reality here, and today marks the first video of me talking about Big Brother. Now, the cast list for the new season, BB23, just dropped, so I figured why not give my takes on them. This is going to be different than my last two videos in the sense where it's less constrained with me not having a script and me sharing my opinions, so yeah. Now, I know for the casting, Robin cast was not a part of like working with the team, so hopefully this will be a different cast than what we've seen from the most recent seasons, and hopefully it can make for an amazing season so also just to quickly address the survivor top 10 winners based on challenges is going to be coming out soon it's actually a very long video to make and thorough in depth so i'm taking some time on it but rest assured it will be out now without further ado let's get into the 16 new house guests of big brother 23 so the first house guest we're going to look at is Alyssa lopez she is 24 from sarasota florida and works as a swimwear designer three adjectives to describe herself she'd say witty sarcastic and outgoing for favorite activities she put weightlifting videography and video editing y'all already know i'm on board with the video editing and then she also says going to siesta key beach to watch the sunset i'm gonna say it like she just looks like someone that was meant to be cast on siesta key and mtv hopefully she can make it work out on this show you know we also read in her bio that she's been watching since season 11 so hopefully she knows the game better than she i mean looks like she does she says her favorite house guest duo is jessica and cody from season 19 jessica is her all-time favorite player um that that already kind of actually puts her in a low light for me because i do think paul is one of the greatest players of all time bb19 is it a good season Probably not, but I was thoroughly entertained by that, and I really, really did not like Jessica or Cody. I understand they were the other side of the house. I, I just think they were horrible game players. Like, when one of them was gone, the other one couldn't really game. Well, I remember Jessica actually being okay. And then, well, Cody's Cody. So, yeah, that already doesn't really put me on her hot, to be honest. The favorite past moment of Big Brother is in Season 11 when Jeff uses the secret power to put Jesse and Natalie on the block. I mean... Yeah, that just is more so, like, I'm not with that just because, like, that was so... What is it even called? Like, the coup d'etat or something? That was just so forced and rigged and, like, it was way too much power, in my opinion. So, the fact that she says that's her favorite past moment, I'm not too hot on that myself. Then her strategy for winning is gonna be the first HOH. She wants to align herself with powerful, physical, and mental players. Winning the first HOH, it's surprising that she doesn't think that... That's gonna put an immediate target on her back. She's gonna use that more to her advantage with getting in alliances and stuff. And if she can do that, if she can make it work out, props to her. But I don't know if that would be the best strategy in my opinion. Just reading random fun facts about her. She has a drone aircraft license, so that's cool. Yeah, but overall, she doesn't look like terrible to me, but definitely not a house guest that I could see myself rooting for it, to be completely honest. All right, the next house guest we got is Aza Awasom. She is 30 years old from Baltimore, Maryland, and she works as a director of sales operations. I mean, her little brief thing says she seems to know her big brother summary, and if that's not enough, when she's talking about her favorite moments, she brings up a moment from BB4. She says her favorite player was June, and she loved the duo of her and Allison, which I did as well. So perfect. I'm already on board with you, definitely. Her favorite past moment that she says is Keisha's birthday in Big Brother 10. Yeah, like I I'm totally on board with that too. Like she pretty much mentions a lot of like events that also occurred around Keisha's birthday. I feel like a lot of people just think about that. Anybody want cake? Like that line. But there's a lot more surrounding it that just is so funny. And I'm glad that she acknowledged that. Her strategy is to spot the power players early and divide them one by one one play for herself not the house perfect this is what we need to see from every castmate i hope that she sticks to her guns with this i hope she doesn't do anything crazy like take herself out just for someone else she does say also right here no showmances in all caps so i really don't think she's looking for that which really makes me happy because showmances are just not the most entertaining thing some fun facts i'm just reading her name means able to make friends that that's cool her grandfather was a polygamist 
and she has over 300 cousins. That's insane. <laughs> like, that is insane. Three adjectives to describe her, she would say charismatic, crafty, and clumsy. I like the alliteration with the C right there. Looking over all of it in summation, I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm rooting for her. She's gonna be one of the people that I am rooting for. At the end of this video, I'm going to make a list of people who I'm most to least like anticipating like or excited for like wanting to win I guess yeah she's definitely gonna be in that top half for sure all right the next guy we're gonna talk about is Brent Champagne he is 28 years old from Cranston Rhode Island and he works as a flight attendant so the three adjectives he would say to describe himself are adventurous passionate and confident you know, it seems kind of basic, but okay. His favorite house guest duo slash showmance would be Tyler and Angela from BB20, who they they were okay. I get. I think that's a really overrated season, to be honest. But I mean, the thing that really just makes uh, leaves a bad taste in my mouth is he has hashtag showmance goals when he's talking about it. Please don't speak in hashtags. Why? He does say that he gets enjoyment of watching the faces of people who get rightfully backdoored. I don't know what he means by rightfully someone not in his alliance probably so something that i found interesting when he was talking about what he would take into the house was a notepad or pen so he could take small notes of the house guests throughout the game for later use down the line and that reminded me a lot of the sepia in season four marquesas and i know that after that they stopped allowing people to bring specifically pens and paper i'm not 100 percent sure on that but they did put some stipulation in after that I don't know if there's anything set for Big Brother like that. If there isn't, and he ends up being able to bring it, that, that'll be very interesting to see. Uh, fun fact, he is a former D1 collegiate athlete. He definitely looks like it. He won his very first car in a video making contest. I would like to see that video. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Rent, he looks pretty basic in my opinion nothing um like not nothing too strongly good or bad to say about him just kind of looks like a typical house guest so um yeah we'll see how he plays the game all right the next one we got is Brittany d'angelo she is 24 years old from niagara falls new york and she works as a kindergarten teacher so she has a lot of favorite activities dancing karate softball tennis theater and this seems like a very adventurous girl already from her favorite activities. We'll see how that'll translate into the house. Hopefully good in some physical competitions. Her favorite duos from the house would be, she lists like four or five here. Derek and Cody, Tyler and Angela, Tyler and Casey, Devon and Bailey, and Paul and Victor. The only one that I really absolutely love is Paul. I can definitely understand the Derek and Cody dynamic as well. I can understand all the other dynamics for sure. I think the strongest ones definitely were Paul and Victor and Derek and Cody. Or Casey and Tyler too, I, I, I guess. I feel like Casey is just such an invisible winner. So our favorite past moment is Dan's funeral, what that inevitably leads to in him voting Shane out. Yeah, that is an iconic moment, so nothing to say about that, definitely understand. And then she said, if she was in the position to press the reset button in season 16 she would not have done it i'm totally on board with as well i definitely would not have done that you know if we see any crazy twists or whatever we'll see if hopefully she lives up to that if she does do something crazy like just reset the whole week then we can come back to this see that like she's going back on it. her strategy for winning the game is to be authentic in the house you know if that if that works for you that works for you i just feel like you gotta play a game where you really you don't care about anybody or anything you just go all out we'll see though many accolades playing four musical instruments and also having a mini snow globe collection that is 173 snow globes worth that's just insane but point is um yeah she seems cool britney seems uh chill i'm excited to see how she'll play the game since she wants to stay loyal she also says that she loved the blind side that dan did in season 14 so we'll see how she plays the game all right next up we got christian birkenberger he is 23 years old from harwinton connecticut and works as a general contractor assistant so right off the bat his summary says that he just wants to be himself play a little clueless and you know if he doesn't really know much about this game Hopefully that strategy can work out for him. He wants to like swoop in at the very end and start winning the comps when it really matters. And we'll see if he can prove that he really can. So he says that his favorite activities include 
being with friends, playing mini golf, basketball, and flirting. So maybe we'll see a showmance with him. Saying the most difficult part is gonna be isolation from loved ones. Y you know that's what it is going in, but I, I guess whatever. I don't know if it's just a typo, but it says Jeff using his coup d'etat power to backdoor Jessica. I'm, I'm sure they mean Jesse, but that just, that, that just looks funny. And also what we were talking about in the first girl, I think that's a really OP move. So I don't know if I'm on board with that. His life's motto is, sometimes your ice pop falls on a penny okay like I don't, i'm not sure how to take that but all right so despite him saying that he is a man of flirting he's only really had one girlfriend that's a fun fact that he lists about himself maybe we won't see a showman's because he's just there to kind of flirt with every girl float around for what he would take into the house he says his cologne it makes him literally irresistible um <laughs> Reading all about this, reading that last statement, and also now reading his favorite showmance was Zack and Frankie in season 16. This definitely seems like a dude that is not there for the, the mental game, but he seems like he'll have a good time. And you know what? If he can navigate his way through this crazy environment, more power to him. I don't know if he's going to have what it takes compared to the rest of these, especially compared to just a couple that I've already read, but we'll see how he plays when he actually gets into the house. All right, so the next person we got is Christy Valdeseri. She is 27 years old from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, now living in North Hollywood, California, working as a professional dancer. So right off the bat, she says she plans to use her loyalty like Derek and Cody did to make it through the season and pull off her big brother win. So if, if we're going after a Derek type of win, I think that that's how I think the man has changed the game since season 16 in the sense of kind of getting a whole big alliance and then just basing everybody around your specific trust. And if she can manage to do that, more power to her. Um, we'll, we'll see how it happens. She says for her three favorite, the three adjectives to describe her, determined, energetic, and passionate. For her favorite past moment, she says it's when Haley was honest to Bailey in season 20 about being the hacker. She thought it was mature, loyal, and respectable, which it was. And I'll just say right off the bat now, uh, I like Haley. Bailey is all, all right. She, maybe she just gets in a, caught in a power trip, but... I don't know, that's not the worst favorite moment I got. That's better than the coup d'etat, in my opinion. Purely just because that's just overpowering. So, fun fact about herself, she has 11 piercings, and five of them she did herself. Yeah, personally, I've never gotten piercings. That That's way too tweaky, freaky for me. But... You know, some people dig it, and maybe that aesthetic will work to her advantage in the season. We'll see. And sh what what would she take into the house? She would take her juicer and an endless supply of celery. Starts every day with celery juice. Hopefully, they have that for her. She's got she's got a great start to her day. If it's just coffee, I don't know how happy of a camper she's gonna be. So yeah, overall, I mean, she's kind of reminding me of the Brent guy I talked about earlier in the sense we're like kind of landing right in the middle not really one of the top house guys, not really one of the bottom ones so far in my opinion, just kind of right there, probably a little higher than him, but yeah, we'll see how she plays when she gets in the house. All right, next up, we got Derek Frazier. He is 29 years old from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he is currently working as a safety officer. So for three adjectives to describe himself, he would say loud, outgoing, and assertive. I'm already a really big fan of that. I love big personalities like that. He is the son of famous boxer Joe Frazier. I'm not big into boxing, but I just looked him up and it seemed like he was a pretty big name in the sport so we'll see how that'll translate to the game maybe if anyone knows who that was maybe they'll want to align with him maybe they'll make him not want to align with him we'll see her favorite duo he says Derek and Cody fair enough I mean I think they're the most memorable duo at least I'll say from the last recent season so understandable his favorite past moment is when dick and jen got into a heated argument in big brother 8 and she threw out all of his cigarettes i like that moment too what would he take into the house his playstation because i wouldn't miss playing video games fair enough man like maybe this will be a twist in the season where they throw a gaming console in there for you hopefully his life's motto is at the end of the day i see through it all it just sounds so stoic and I absolutely love it. Right when I was looking over everyone, there were, I would say three people that I was very, very excited about and Derek was one of them. Just from the brief little synopsis I got without reading his full bio, reading it all now, 
that just makes me even more excited. Derek, I am rooting for the most out of everyone that I've talked about so far. Hopefully he's got what it takes to navigate to the end. But like I've been saying with everyone, we will see when the game begins. Then next up, we have another Derek, Derek Zhao. He is 24 years old from Baltimore, Maryland, currently living in New York, working as a startup founder. He's talking about in his favorite activities that he really likes chess and surfing. Growing up, his mom only cooked him Chinese food. So as he's grown older, he started to learn how to make other dishes and he loves cooking. So maybe he can be like Joe in 14 where people just keep him around because he's, he's cooking. Or maybe he'll be like, like Ovi, which bakes cookies for everyone, and they vote him out immediately. For favorite duo, he says Dr. Will and Mike Boogie. They might be the most iconic duo um, of the entire overcompassing show. Understandable. Favorite past moment, he says Dan's funeral speech. 100%, I'm with that man. It was flawless gameplay, that's what he says, and I totally agree with that. His strategy for winning, building relationships for every with everyone in the house, and slowly turning friendships into alliances. So hopefully, we'll see how that translates into so it looks like he's very business oriented especially when you take a look at what he would want to take in the house he says his laptop so he can keep working on my business but i think he's going to realize soon when he gets in that this show is going to become his new business so a weird fun fact i'm reading is he was stung by a jellyfish in thailand then later forced to eat the jellyfish that that's that's gross yeah but overall i really like derek's bio um i think he is gonna be very exciting to watch i do think it's a little confusing that cbs got two derricks in there but hey i like both of them so fingers crossed that they both play solid games all right so the next house guest we got is brandon frenchy french he is 34 years old from Tennessee and is currently working as a farmer. So for three adjectives, the first one he includes is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and okay, quick laugh, haha, I don't want to say that word again. His favorite houseguest duo, Brittany Haynes and Rachel's hair extensions from season 12. His favorite past moment is Dan's funeral that was on his daughter's birthday. I can understand how you just see that as a legendary, iconic moment, especially when you have the memory of your daughter's birthday being on that exact episode so he seems like he's going to use his farmer work job to his advantage he says being a farmer no two days are the same you never know what to expect he always has to evolve and change game plans on a daily basis so he's already looking at the game aspect for it he's saying set strategies are overrated and crumble so he's saying he's just kind of going to go in see what the house is kind of doing and work from there and i really respect that what would he would take into the house and why he says a picture of his son who passed away because it motivates him like no other rest in peace i definitely hope you can prevail this win for him fun fact about himself is that he owns a two-time grand national championship show bull that lives better than most humans i don't know what the living conditions of that bull is but maybe he's got like his own luxury mansion or something favorite activities yes days with the kids i i thought that was only the movie with jennifer garner but if that's a thing that's cool that's awesome yeah i'm not gonna lie i thought it was kind of a little uh cringy when i first saw the super califragilistic stuff but overall after reading all of it i'm definitely rooting for more than i thought i would be originally so yeah brandon frenchy Fr i don't know how he's going to be referred to in the house but i'm excited to see him all right the next house guest we got is hannah chada she is 21 years old from chicago illinois and she is currently working as a graduate student now right off the bat i just got to say 100 rooting for her because she is from my own hometown of chicago she is basically my age i'm about to turn 21 in a month so you know props to her already i'm fully on board with it she says she has no problem getting messy and will gladly bathe in people's blood very exciting hopefully she does that what i'm kind of nervous about is i feel like a lot of illinois house guests have gone on the show in the past saying a lot of things before in their pre-interviews and just kind of end up being a big flop scotty from season 20 Christy from Big Brother Over the Top, or Chrissy from Big Brother Over the Top. Sure, there's Jeff, but I don't know. Three words that describe her is calculated, composed, and versatile. Hey, and she's saying that she is excited for everything that the game entails when she lives in the Big Brother house 
even being on slop, taking cold showers. She says it's her dream to backstab and blindside the other house guests all the way to the end. And if that is her gameplay, if it's, if it's as cutthroat as she's saying right now, then I am very, very excited. My favorite past moment is, again, as a couple other people have said, Dan gets Danielle to use the veto on him and blindside Shane and BB14. And like I've said already, love that. The strategy for winning is cultivating personal relationships in the house. And then she says she won't have a problem exploiting those people's weaknesses for her own benefit everything that she's saying right now is perfect for me i love it i love it i love it. now she just has to deliver in the house which fingers crossed that she does the life motto is never give up all your information taking that into the big brother house is definitely going to earn her some brownie points she graduated from university at 19 years old much applause to her damn if you couldn't tell already through my rating I absolutely love Hannah. Yeah, she's probably like my top one above Derek. Um, yeah, I am rooting for her tenfold and I cannot wait to see how she plays the game. Hopefully she lives up to all the hype that she gives herself in this bio. The next house guest we got is Kylan Young from San Bernardino County, California. He is 29 years old and currently works as an account executive. So he plans to storm the house using the stylings of Derek, Cody, Dan, and Casey, which if we can see a hybrid of all of those games, it'll be very interesting. It says that he is optimistic, dynamic, and engaging, which definitely has to work for his benefit. I don't know about the optimism because you always gotta be weary about everybody in the house, but I'm very excited to see the dynamic and engaging aspects come out of him. Favorite activities, movies. He's a huge film buff, especially with watching them at the theater. I gotta totally agree with him on that. I talk about movies all the time. I have like a little blog for it and stuff. So maybe he's talking about the newest releases, what he thinks of all of them when he's in the house. That'll be fun to hear. So he says, although I am not a personal big fan of season 19 Cody, he did love his showmance with Jessica to the point that he was excited to see him back into the house to reunite with her. Okay, like I, I don't really like the showmance or Cody, but if you can find a fine line between those two, then more power to you i'll also just say right now his bio is incredibly vast he's given very large answers for all of these questions which shows me that he's a very he's very excited to play this game his favorite past moment dan's funeral love that his life's motto is being realistic is the most commonly traveled route to mediocrity hopefully he can take that realism that people think that he has with them subvert their expectations and come in in the end and win fun fact about himself he's pretty sure he's a jedi and any day i will be able to to move uh, he will be able to move objects using the force definitely giving me some howie vibes from season six and seven so if he could bring back that fun that howie was in those seasons i'm all here for it seen every best picture oscar film over the last 20 years as have i that that's dope and uh yeah that's all for kylan i'm not really excited about the uh jessica comment he made to be honest but overall um yeah i am interested in seeing how he plays he'll definitely probably be in my top half so um yeah so next up we got stara stegall stegall not sure how to say that She's 28 years old from Boiling Springs, South Carolina, currently living in Fort Myers, Florida, working as a forensic scientist. Just from that little description and the way she looks, she's reminding me of Michelle from BB11, who I thought was a pretty solid player. Three adjectives to describe herself, she said sweet, quirky, and self-driven. And again, reminds me of Michelle. Favorite house guys, this is one that I was, two that I wasn't expecting, Frank and Bridget and Brittany and Ian. Very unique choices. What is her favorite past moment on the show? Everything Zach Rance did on BB16. I will say after the show, totally became like kind of a, a jerk in the Big Brother universe in my opinion, but I as well absolutely loved every second of him on BB16. Her strategy for winning, uh, she says she plans to float. She wants to make everyone feel at ease and convince them she's a non-threatening loyal person. That's kind of reminding me of Nicole from season 21, who I don't think has the best game to be honest with you at all. Hopefully she can forge some relationships at the beginning, play the game somewhat, and not just totally wholly 100% flow. She's apparently been studying Japanese so much that she wants to bring her textbooks into the house because she is studying so hard. She doesn't want to forget anything. So hopefully you won't forget anything, but you gotta just focus on the game. So she says she has a crippling phobia of moths slash butterflies, which kind of reminds me of, was it chickens that Nicole was afraid of? Can't remember what it was, but Nicole from BB21 was deathly afraid of something. Just a further thing that's making me connect her to Nicole. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it for Sarah. Kind of like the exact same as Ren, to be honest with you. Kind of middle of the road. She said she wants to be a floater. I'm not really too hot on that strategy, but if she can make it work and still be entertaining, then 
more power to her we'll just have to see when she actually gets in the house next up we got tiffany mitchell she is 40 years old from detroit michigan working as a phlebotomist three words to describe her is the most typical words you would see ever kind funny and outgoing oh you know, if she really is all those things hopefully she is more power to her but i don't know if that'll work the best strategy in the big brother house her favorite house guest duo she says what most of these people have been saying cody and derek and she says for favorite past moment it's when Dan Geeslin eulogized his own BB funeral. And yeah, I can't take anything away from her for saying that. Sure, has everyone else said it? Maybe. But does she know that? No. So, fair enough. She said she would take her journal to document the entire process, which is kind of reminiscent of the person we talked about earlier who wanted to bring in a notepad and there was also someone else who said journal she says her favorite color is tiffany blue is that a real color let me know I've, I've never heard of that but if that is that is pretty sick because it's got a color that she can just claim as her own like favorite so that's dope yeah besides that there doesn't really seem much to read about her her bio is pretty small hopefully she packs a punch while she's in the house so am i super excited to see her is she like in the top half probably not but i don't think she's terrible so for whatever that's worth there you go next up we got travis long he is 22 years old from austin texas currently living in honolulu hawaii working as a tech sales consultant three words to describe him is rambunctious curious and strong will his plan for this summer is to form close one-on-one -on -one relationships while also pulling pranks on the house guests and creating chaos you know i'm always down for a good entertaining prank so if he can pull it off i'm very excited to see that for favorite activities he says cinematography and that is very very interesting i would definitely not take him as someone who is really into that but hey you know what i love filmmaking so if he can make some beautiful films with his cinematography i'm here for it and his favorite house guest duo he says is brett and winston personally i hate winston i think he was a terrible house guest in season 20 awful gameplay brett is okay his favorite past moment is brett making the effort to stay when he lied on the block and said rockstar was flipping and not voting for him to be evicted that is an iconic moment moment on my daughter's birthday absolute fire what would you take into the house he says the ocean so he never have to do his hair and he could live off of sushi that seems kind of silly he says he is almost fluent in spanish after growing up playing soccer and living in costa rica that's interesting and he has a wall full of sticky notes and quotes and nuggets of knowledge from friends and family and people in his room that is definitely something you don't hear every day so more power to him he says he's going to try to utilize his charismatic personality to connect with people but not go too over the top with the friendliness so he can cruise under the table so it kind of looks like that's saying that he wants to float while also definitely forging some bonds he, he's okay to me definitely the fact that he said brett and winston threw a monkey wrench in like my opinion of him because i just i i really think winston is like just not a good player we'll see how travis's game translates onto the game hopefully he can make something at least entertaining with the pranks that he talks about but yeah we won't see until next week so next up we got whitney williams she is 30 years old from portland oregon working as a makeup artist she's wanting to play the game by being a strong strong competitor but not making too many ripples so we'll see how that translates she's definitely a fan of the couples that have been formed on the show Brenchel, jeff and jordan and jessica and cody are the three that she lists which hey if you're there for a showman's more power to you i just feel like hey why aren't you on love island you know her favorite past moment she says was in the entirety of derek's gameplay as well as dan's funeral she does include obviously so i'm glad that she acknowledges that that's a common thing between everybody that they're gonna probably say that and she says her strategy for winning is each season and cast is different that it makes it hard to go with an exact game plan which i'm glad that she acknowledges that she doesn't just come in full like okay this is what i'm gonna do bada bing bada boom because you don't really know what the house is gonna be like so it's good that she's just kind of taking a step back looking and she's gonna analyze her competition before she really develops the strategy. Hey, a fun fact about herself, she developed her own Tillamook ice cream flavor you can buy in stores, white chocolate raspberry. I'm not the biggest raspberry guy, but hey, for those of you that are, try to support Whitney, you know, go grab her ice cream. She's kind of reminding me of one of the previous house guests, Brandon, I believe, when he was talking about being away from his children, that'd be kind of a struggle. And that's what she says as well, which, totally understandable overall um probably in the bottom half of my list but 
I think that she does have some semblance of a gameplay ready to go. Hopefully she can make for at least some entertaining television. Maybe she doesn't have to make ripples, but just, I don't know. But we'll see when she gets in the house. And finally, the last guy we're going to be talking about is Xavier Prather. He is 27 years old from Kalamazoo, Michigan, currently living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin as an attorney. He says he is very fond right off the bat of Brittany Haynes and Dar Danielle Ray's diary room to... Both of them do have some of, if not the most iconic diary room sessions. So, hey, that, that was also a very unique thing to say, in my opinion. I feel like we haven't seen a lot of people talking about anyone's DRs, but for him to just come out and say that, hey, much respect to him. For his favorite house guest duos, he said Chill Town, then he put Rest in Peace. So, hey, at least he's caught up enough in the outside universe of Big Brother to know that they are not the closest. He is definitely keeping in touch with this game still. And his favorite past moments also kind of go along with the diary room things he's saying. It was either Britney's goodbye to Boogie in BB14 or Danielle imperson impersonating everybody in BB3. They are both equally hilarious, as he says. I totally agree with that. For what he would take into the house, he says uh, his record player in vinyl records, good music and good vibes. Who, who can get mad at that? says he has 10 siblings at least he knew how to navigate that social climate so hopefully that'll translate well into this one says he's in bit of an ambivert which to be completely honest not really sure what that means a balance of extrovert and introvert features okay perfect yeah just overlooking all of it that's about it for xavier pretty excited to see him play he was one of the three people i was talking about earlier that i thought could be like easily my top tier like top three whatever i don't know if he's that but he's definitely someone that i want to look out for on the show and hopefully he will play the game well and make for some entertaining gameplay or just be a fun person to watch all right now that we are finished i'll just give you my list from least to most excited to enter the house we'll just run down the line real quick number 16 we got Alyssa. Number 15, Travis. Number 14, Whitney. Number 13, Tiffany. Number 12, Christian. Number 11, Brent. Number 10, Sarah. Number 9, Kyland. Number 8, Christy. Number 7, Xavier. Number 6, Brittany. Number 5, Derek X. Number 4, Brandon. Number 3, Aza. Number 2, Derek F. And number 1, Hannah. Alright guys, so just a quick little editing note. Instead of having Kylan at number 9, I'm actually going to put him over Christy, Xavier, and Brittany. So here's what the new list should look like. And also, I just noticed there was another I in Brittany's name. Is it pronounced Brittany? If so, my apologies for getting it wrong the entire video. So yeah, we finally got through it all. Wow, I I don't know if you guys are excited as me. If you stood to the end of the video, you probably are. So if you could drop a like, that would be greatly appreciated. Season's going to premiere next week. I probably won't be doing reviews of the individual episodes, but if you guys want me to do anything of that sort, let me know below. Like I said at the beginning as well, the Survivor video with the top 10 players to never win is coming out soon, so just be on the lookout for that. But until my next video, I'm Random Reality, and always remember, enjoy yourself.